Romero will not be showing up today, or any day for that matter. Liar! I'll cut you! I'll cut you! <laughs> he promised me a part in his new movie. It's going to be called Mid-Afternoon of the Not Quite Dead. <laughs> the waiter tried to take the knife away from her, but she nicked his forearms pretty heavily, causing motor oil to pour profusely. Then she spun around in an old tin fizzy. When she stopped, she began bottoming, vomiting all over the walls. Normally, nothing more startling would have happened, but this turned out to be far from a normal day. The mooing of a cow rever reverberated throughout the air. This caused everyone to freeze in their seats. Cows had been extinct for some 50 odd years. They all had to be put to sleep after they developed a taste for human flesh. Wherever this cow came from, it ran, ran straight for our table. It pounced on poor Joanne and tore it to shreds before running off into the sunset. This all happened within the blink of an eye, but I did manage to catch sight of the Vatican logo branded on the cow's backside. I closed my eyes, lifted my hands towards the heavens, and swore to avenge Joanne's death, which meant I'd have to go after the Pope himself. And then a different waiter brought out my beer nuts. I spent 38 years in the jungle preparing for this day. I taught myself the art of spider monkey jujitsu ju using crudely fashioned bamboo dolls. Now I was rowing my raft up the river in Vatican City. I was living for giving the Pope his due. I finally reached a remote beach near the Vatican. I hid my raft among some bushes so no one would steal it. Without my raft, the escape portion of my plan would be foiled. I stealthily made my way across the beach, crawling with my belly pressed against the sand, taking care to move with the shadows. I came upon the first guard. He appeared to be asleep. Perfect, I thought. This will be an easy kill. I ran up behind him, pulled out my knife, and slit his throat. The strawberry syrup that poured out made me realize I had been tricked. The real first guard flew down from his perch and delivered a swift kick to my ribs. He went for a second kick, but luckily my bamboo doll training left me well prepared for such events. I grabbed his foot and pulled him towards me. I karate chopped the inside of his standing leg. I connected right at the knee, causing him to buckle down. I swept my legs out so his body would fall on them. I back rolled onto my shoulders and catapulted him into the sky. At that point, the fight should have been over, with the outcome in my favor. But the guard transformed into a dozen blue jays that were sweeping down fiercely at me. I knew there was only one thing I could do. Run. <laughs> I ran up a nearby ramp, but American Gladiator Nitro was impeding my path. I needed to use my cunning intellect to overcome this obstacle. I said, hey, look, it's Lace. Where? He turned his head, and while he looked the other way, I ran by. Now, you may be wondering why a trick using such a dated reference would work in the future. Well, it just did, okay? I kept running until I came to a swamp. It would do me no good to continue my current course of action. I pulled out my grappling hook and shot it into the air. The hook latched onto a vulture that was flying by. Thankfully, it was strong enough to carry me to the other side. When I was above solid ground, I jumped down. My eyes widened in amazement. The Vatican was even more glorious than I ever imagined. 273 feet tall, encrusted in gold macrame, and featuring a nifty collection of pinball machines in the back corner. It almost made me want to con convert from my monkey bird religion. I started to climb the stairs, but changed my mind when I noticed the elevator. An affable man in a uniform greeted me on my way in. Good day, sir. And where are we off to? Um, what floor is the Pope on? Oh, are you here about installing the macrolization-er? No, I came to avenge my girlfriend's death. Oh, uh, another one of those. Pope asked me to take all such cases to his receptionist. I was taken to a large waiting room. Apparently a huge number of people wanted to see the Pope, seeking vengeance for the death of a loved one. Receptionist came out from a, from behind a menacing Art Deco door and said, Number 687, please. Number 687. A man stood up and said, My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Please save it for the Pope. Inigo followed the receptionist inside. I spent the next three days waiting for my turn to see the Pope. I walled the time away by fantasizing how I would take my revenge. I imagine a good swift kick to the groin. While he was bent over, I put the Pope in a half nest and then gave him a nugget. Then I tie him up upside down and shove baseball cards beneath, underneath his fingertips. Then I pull out a knife and make a deep gash across his chest, right above his heart. Then I'd hold open his eyelids and force him to stare at a picture of Joanne while he slowly bled to death. Number 2,456, please. Number 2,456. My number was up. I walked inside and was let down a long hallway. I finally reached the Pope's office. Inside, he was sitting behind a desk. The frail old man stood up and greeted me. What may I do for you, my son? A cow bearing your logo killed my girlfriend. I've come to set things 
right. I am very saddened at your loss, and I apologize profusely. I was a young fool then, and thought genetically engineering a cow would be fun. Had I known mass carnage would have been the result, I surely, surely would have mixed the idea. I know that you can never truly find solace, because I cannot bring your beloved back. But please accept this Snicker bar, Snickers bar as a token of my sorrow. I was definitely not expecting that to happen. I found myself unable to exact my revenge. It just didn't seem right. I lost the candy bar on a heavy heart. As I rode my raft back down the river, I ate the Snicker bar, Snickers and reflected upon how I had wasted my whole life in pursuing this one pointless goal. <coughs> I began to forget the hope in my heart. Hey, everyone deserves a second chance. Then I realized the candy bar had a particular taste to it. In fact, it tasted like... <laughs> I got an A for that one. <laughs> <laughs>